Under cover of darkness, a Ukrainian drone boat approaches a Russian Navy ship on the Black Sea. Moments later, the unmanned surface vessel, loaded with explosives, reaches its target and detonates. This is one of several successful kamikaze attacks by Ukraine's new and relatively low-cost weapon. In its war against Russia, Ukraine has had to improvise against a much larger foe. Nearly 5,000 missiles have been launched at Ukraine since the start of Russia's invasion. At least 20% of those were launched at sea. From its ships offshore, the Russian Navy has been bombarding Ukraine, targeting its civilian infrastructure and plunging cities across the country into darkness. That's where the naval drone comes into play. Looking like a maritime version of the Batmobile, it's five and a half meters long and keeps a low profile. Powered by a water jet engine, like those used in jet skis, it can travel at speeds of up to 80 kilometers an hour. It's also loaded with tech, including a camera, infrared sensors, and a communications antenna. The warhead sits somewhere within the body of the vessel and can weigh more than 400 pounds. Two objects at the bow serve as triggers to set off the explosives on impact. Ukraine says it has an operational radius of up to 400 kilometers. Through its fundraising platform, United24, the country plans to raise enough money to build a fleet of 100. They each cost $250,000 to build, and for a donation of that much or more, you can name one of them. Countering the Russian Navy in the Black Sea is crucial to Ukraine's survival, and it's hoping a fleet of naval drones will give it the edge it needs to do that. Police in San Francisco want to arm their robots and give them the green light to kill, but only in cases where lethal force is absolutely necessary. According to the proposal by the San Francisco Police Department, robots would be allowed to kill when risk of loss of life to members of the public or officers is imminent and outweighs any other force option available to SFPD. The San Francisco force already has the robots, which are normally used for bomb defusing and can be outfitted with a range of weapons. If the proposal goes ahead, it wouldn't be the first police force in America to use robots to kill. In 2016, law enforcement in Dallas used a robot like this one, equipped with explosives to kill a suspect who had shot and killed five police officers. Other options would have exposed our officers to grave danger. A future where robocops are policing the streets and using lethal force to do it may become reality sooner than you'd think. This is the world's biggest iPhone assembly plant in Zhengzhou, China. This week, workers at the Foxconn facility clashed with police, following protests over pay and working conditions. Witnesses said workers were beaten by police. Rising COVID-19 cases forced the closure of the plant last month, and new workers were promised bonuses and safer working conditions. The company has denied the allegations by protesters, but this is just the latest incident involving Foxconn, including a string of staff deaths by suicide spanning two decades. Foxconn's Zhengzhou plant assembles more iPhones than anywhere else in the world. If you're watching this on an iPhone right now, there's a good chance it was made at this facility. And Apple says it expects lower shipments of iPhone 14 models because of the labor disruptions at this plant. In a statement, Apple said customers will experience longer wait times to receive their new products. 